All right, we've got the practice test for section 6.4 through 6.8. And I was thinking last night when I looked this over, this is going to seem like a long time ago that we were doing this stuff. Um, 6.4 was really hefty with the fraction exponents. So it's got, for problems 1 through 6, simplify each expression, assume that all variables are positive. And as we look at these numbers, 343 and 64, I hope you see, hey, there's x's and y's on the top and the bottom. I can actually simplify this first. And hopefully you would try to simplify 343 over 64. So you could use your calculator for that part and type in 353 divided by 64, enter, and then hit math number one. Well, for good or bad, we can't reduce that 343 over 64. But we definitely can do some canceling of our little x's and y's. We can definitely do that. So we can take three of the x's from the top and the bottom. That'll leave us with an x to the third on the top. And we can take six of those y's from the top and the bottom. And that'll leave us with y to the sixth. Now what we have to do is remember that one-third power is the same as what when it's a root? It is cubed root. So we really want the cubed root of 343. And then we want x to the third raised to the one-third power and y to the sixth raised to the one-third power over the cubed root of 64. So then we grab our power chart. We haven't worked with cube root of 343 a whole lot. We'd say, ooh, cube root of 343, that's right up there. That's a 7. And then power to a power, what are we supposed to do with these exponents? It's not been that long. Come on now. When you raise a power to a power, what do you do? You do multiply. So 3 times a third is 1. So that'll be x to the first. 6 times a third is 2. So y squared. And then let's hope the cube root of 64 is on our power chart. Cube root of 64 is 4. All right, take a quick look at that while I fix the past thing here. Do you see any other math we could do with that, or is that in simplified form? That's as simple as we can get. There's no negative powers. Uh, we found all of our cubed roots. It's all a go. So take a peek at number two. Which one of those? Well, let's start this way. Let's get rid of some negatives if we can. We can't get rid of this negative 128 in the middle because that's just a negative number. But what's a negative power for? What do we use negative powers for? To flip it, reciprocals. So this will be negative 1 over 128 to the 3 sevenths. Which of those two is the root? Right, so remember, roots go in the ground, so it's the one on the bottom here. So this will be the seventh root of negative 1 over the seventh root of 128 raised to the third power. What do you suppose the seventh root of negative 1 is? Close. Negative 1. Now let's power chart the seventh root of 128. Seventh root of 128 is 2. And all we have left is to raise both of those to the third power. So we think of it as negative 1 to the third over 2 to the third. What's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1? Negative 1. 2 times 2 times 2. There it is. 
So we've shown all the steps there from using that negative exponent for reciprocals and then showing that we understand that if we have a 7 on the bottom, that's seventh root, and away we go. Three, much more basic. Three just wants to know, do we remember what we're supposed to do when we multiply similar bases? What do we do with the exponents when we multiply similar bases? We do add them. But one of these isn't even reduced yet. I would want to reduce it before I added. Two-eighths reduces to what? Yeah. Now, if we're going to add those two, we have two ways to do it. The old-fashioned way, which I'm going to write down up here, which is doing the common denominators, or you can grab your graphing calculator and punch in 1 6 plus 1 fourth and then change it back into a fraction. But 6 and 4, what's the least common denominator for those two? 12. So this one needs a 2 on the top and the bottom. And this one needs a 3. So what's 2 twelfths plus 3 twelfths? It is 5 twelfths. And now it came with fraction powers, so we're okay leaving that answer there. And if you wanted to check that on the test, you could grab your calculator and punch in parentheses 1 divided by 6 parentheses plus parentheses 1 divided by 4 parentheses. Hit answer, math number 1, and there it is. It's 5 twelfths, so you know you did it right at that point. Okay, take a look at number 4. Is there anything inside the parentheses that we could simplify? There is. Take a look in there. There's something that's not supposed to be there if you have a simplified answer. The negative power, right. So let's keep these up top and move that x to the third down to the bottom. But there's nothing else we can simplify in there. So now we look to the outside. What does a negative exponent do again? So let's flip the whole thing. Now, we're going to keep that little one-third power for our variables, because that works nice for variables. But what's one-third power as a root for that 27? Cube root. So we'll have x to the third to the one-third power cubed root of 27, and y to the 6 to the 1 3rd power. When you raise a power to a power, what do you do with the exponents again? We had to do this in an earlier problem. Look back if you need to. When we raise a power to a power, what do we do with those exponents? We do multiply. So what's 3 times a third? 1. So x to the first on the top, which is just x. Cubed root of 27, I think we know that one without pulling up the power chart. What's that? that that's 3. And what's 6 times 1 third? 2. That's looking good all simplified over there. First four problems. Done! We get to five. Now, one of the test-taking strategies that you can always have is look at the other problems and say, gosh, you know, what do I do with this? Well, we can't do this math because this is a cubed root and this is a fourth root, and roots don't work that way. If you have radicals, they have to have like radicals for us to be able to put them together. So then you think, gosh, what are we doing on this front page? What have all of these problems got in common? They all have fraction powers, so that's what we have to do to that one. Blessing? Oh, thank you. I said to a 2 and I wrote down a 6. Thank you, Blessing. There we go. So we're going to change this to a fraction power. What's cubed root as a fraction power? One third. What's fourth root as a fraction power?
Least common denominator for three and four. A 12 again. So this one will need a four on the top and the bottom, and this one's gonna need a three on the top and the bottom. So we'll have six to the four twelfths over six to the three twelfths. Now what are we supposed to do with those two exponents? We do subtract. When you divide, you subtract. So that'll be 6 to the 1 12th. But did this problem come with fraction exponents or with radicals? So we should give the answer as a radical when we're done. Now what's 1 12th as a root? 12th root. So it doesn't look so fantastic, but that's our answer right there. 12 through to 6. All right, let's go to 6. See some simplifying we can do inside the parentheses? Definitely. We've got x's on the top and the bottom. What are we supposed to do with the exponents when we have division? Subtract. So what's 2 minus a negative 8? 10. Now what do we do with those exponents? When you raise the power to a power, what do you do? Good, multiply. So off here to the side, I'll do the multiplication. 10 times 1 over 2 times 5. You can do a little cross-canceling there. And we're going to get 2 times 2 is 4 over 1 times 1, which is 1. And we have it. So the whole first page is all about, do we remember all of our rules for exponents? To multiply, you add. To divide, you subtract. To raise a power to a power, you multiply. Can we change them into roots and find what we need? And the bulk of the second page is, hey, here's some equations. Let's solve them. I mean, that's, that's what we have to do here. So solve each equation and check for extraneous solutions. First thing we do is isolate the radical. That's already done in this one. So how do you undo taking the square root of something? Well, let's square both sides. And we realize this one's going to be a little work. Because what do I have to square over there on the right? Yeah, the entire thing, x minus 18. So we're going to have to multiply x minus 18 times x minus 18 using FOIL. And most of you didn't have to memorize up to 18 squared, so I'll put that up there. That's 324. Now, how are we going to get all of this on one side so we can try to factor it? What should we do? Subtract the x and subtract the 2. And that's a bit of a monster for us to do our factoring in. But let's see if we can find it. So. There's no greatest common monomial factor. We can't make this easier to factor. It's just kind of iffy. And then um, there's no perfect square because 322 is not a perfect square trinomial. We're just going to have to do some good old-fashioned searching here to find two numbers that multiply to 322 and add to negative 37. Now, the good news is we both they both would have to be negative. And we start searching. So, 322 is even, but 161 and 2 are not going to get us what we need. So then we'll try dividing it by 3, not a nice number, by 4, not a nice number. Remember, we want integers. 5 isn't going to work. We'll try 6. Nope. 7. 7 and 46. 
not going to give us 36. So we'll keep looking. 8, 9, we know 10's not going to work. Did you find it already, Carson? Yeah, 23. 23 and 14 it is. So I just hadn't gotten there yet. It takes a while. Just keep searching. That's what we do. So we have two answers here. We have x equals 23 and x equals 14. But there was a reminder up there, wasn't there? What do we have to do with these answers? We have to check them. We have to plug them in because it's possible one or both of these are not going to work. So get a little space here. Square root of 23 plus 2 equals 23 minus 18. That's the square root of 25, and that's 5. Is the square root of 25 5? Hey, at least one of them works. Let's try 14. Square root of 14 plus 2, does that equal? That's not readable. 14 minus 18. Square root of 16 equals negative 4. The square root of 16 equal negative 4? So we did all that work to find that number, and it doesn't work. <clears throat> but we have to show those checks. So 23 is good. 14 is out. Let's go to number 8. The radical again, because the radical is the fraction power that we have there, is already on one side by itself. Anybody remember what we raise it to to get rid of a fraction power when we're solving? We square it. We raise it to the reciprocal power. So we're going to square both sides. And negative 5 squared is 25. Well, this one's much easier. We don't have to do all that factoring stuff. So we'll subtract 1. And divide by 2. But again, it might work. It might not work. And the direction said, check for extraneous solutions. So we're going to plug it in. So 2 times 12 is 24. And 24 plus 1 is 25. And we've got 25 to the 1 half is a negative 5. 25 to the 1 half. What's that the same of as a radical? Does the square root of 25 equal negative 5? No. So we found one answer and it doesn't work. What must that mean? Exactly. No real solutions. So we definitely have to check. Want to make sure that we've got answers that are going to work for everything that we're doing. All right. Number nine. Is the radical all by itself? Well, that's good news. So how do you undo cube root? Let's cube both sides. Well, let's see. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, that's negative 8. Hey, no factoring again. Love it when that happens. Doesn't take us as long. So let's add 4 to both sides and divide by 2. And then we've got to check and see, is this really going to work or not? So we'll plug it back in and see. times negative 2 is what? Negative 4. What's negative 4 minus 4 more? Negative 8. Is the cubed root of negative 8 really negative 2? It is. This one works. So this one's good. Our check shows everything's going to be okay there. 
Number 10. Is the radical all by itself? Uh-oh. That means we've got a step to do before we can do anything else. What step is that? That's divided out. Let's get it over to the other side. Okay, what power are we going to have to raise this to so we can get rid of that two-thirds? Three halves. Raise it to the reciprocal power. Okay, which one of those is the root over there, the three or the two? So this just got interesting because we need the square root of 25 cubed. And what two numbers are the square root of 25? Positive and negative 5. So that means x minus 2 is going to equal both positive and negative 125. So x minus 2 could equal negative 125, and x minus 2 could equal positive 125. So solving this one probably isn't the hardest of all four of these problems, but remembering that when we take that square root, we have to do the plus or minus. That's what makes it a little more interesting. And we have two answers that, of course, we have to check. So. 2 times negative 123 minus 2 to the 2 thirds. Does that equal 50? You might want to use a calculator for this one. I mean, do this little bit of math in your head. And then make sure it equals 50. Same thing for the other one. Just to make sure that it works here. Two, whoops, two parentheses, negative 125 parentheses, to the parentheses, two divided by three power. It's 50. Two parentheses, 125 parentheses, to the parentheses, 2 divided by 3 power, 50, even though I wrote down 5 there. So both of these check. Right there. So, so far, these four problems, these are probably going to be the ones that take you the longest on the test, but as long as you remember all the little steps that are in there, you'll be okay. And now we'll finish up today with 11 and 12. Anybody need more time to write yourself a little reminder about this page or anything? Because I would be putting a big star next to this one right here. To remember that you have to do the plus and minus piece on that one. All right. 11 and 12. Let f of x equal x squared minus 3, g of x equal x plus 4, perform each function operation, and then find the domain. So f of x divided by g of x. What number do we have to say you can't use? Negative 4 is out. Now, let's see if we can simplify that. The only way we can simplify it is if x squared minus 3 is factorable. Is x squared minus 3 something we can factor? Are there two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add to 0? So this is done. Remember, this was the section where very little math we can do, but it's all about the domain. So it's done. There's nothing else we can do. 12. This one, there's always going to be somebody that makes the most common mistake in mathematics. You're going to forget about this subtraction piece for the whole thing. So if you use parentheses to plug in the x plus 4, I think that'll help you. Remember, hey, I have to do negatives for everything that's in there, so I have to distribute. And 
and then combine like terms. Bless you. All right, so does anybody see any even roots in that problem? How about any division? Then what should we put for the domain? All real numbers. So remember, the only two things we look for are division and even roots. Those are the ones we restrict. All right, that's what I wanted to make sure that we got through today. And we can save 13 through 20 for tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to give you a little slip. It's going to have the assignment on it. But remember, it's one assignment for both days. So you're not going to get a new assignment tomorrow. Probably do about half of it tonight.